All right, we got the setup out of the way. Let's see if the second issue of this mini can pick things up a notch. Hopefully with us reminding us of what's come before in excruciating detail. The cover is once again really well done, with Sonic hanging off the side of the Death Egg facing down Carl Condor, while Knuckles rises up towards the Death Egg as lasers are fired from several points on the station. It's pretty damn nice looking, and once again gives us a very epic, questy feel, even when we haven't really gotten to the quest part of the mini yet, it doesn't feel like. Once again we get an all-text recap page, but once again it spends its first half trying to pitch the series to us before actually recapping what happened in the first issue. Mostly because it really doesn't feel like a lot happened in the first issue, right? And then we open on another recap page, which goes into more detailed recaps for the situation each character is in, before finally kicking off our story with Snively's ugly, melting face. My god, would you look at that thing. Robotnik contacts Snively specifically to give him the As You Know speech for the benefit of the audience to let him know that he's putting all the rings he's gathered into a chainmail pattern around the shell of the Death Egg, and that he'll be dumping all of the excess waste that was sucked up in the previous issue so that he can make his way up into proper orbit around the planet and put his plan into action. Cut over to Tails and his weirdly long and thin neck as he pulls himself out of the debris. He finds the remains of the SWAT bot Robotnik destroyed before, putting it on as a disguise just as the second bot enters, with orders from Robotnik to double-check the debris for any power rings left behind. Tails manages to sneak around it and close the other SWAT bot in, and tricks Robotnik with his disguise before being ordered to empty the debris off the ship. Cut again to Sonic, being carried towards the Death Egg by the Condor. Sonic was faking being knocked out and manages to break free of the bird's grasp, somehow keeping himself afloat by using the figure 8 peel-out move. Because screw you, physics, you have no place in a piece of Sonic media. The two of them fight for a moment, with Sonic at a clear disadvantage, but then the debris starts to empty out, allowing Sonic to jump off of the Condor and grab the edge of the garbage chute, while Carl Condor is crushed and dragged to the ground below. Congratulations, Sonic, you've killed another sentient being held in a metallic shell. Another cut back to Sally and Knothole. She's consulting Nicole to see if she can find a way to heal her father, but without any more data, she can't diagnose him properly. Rotor enters, past a thankfully silent St. John, and informs her that Bunny and Antoine got lost on their way to the Lake of Rings. It got better when Bunny took the map away from him. And that he hasn't heard from Sonic or Tails and can't reach either of them on their communicators. And then the dam breaks and Sally rushes into Rotor's arms, feeling like everything is starting to fall apart around her, and the king sheds a single tear. But enough about all that emotional baggage, let's cut right back over to the Death Egg, where Robotnik has called Tails up to join him in the cockpit, apparently not seeing that the robot is way too badly damaged to be functional. Tails peeks through the viewer to see where they're going and why Robotnik is so worked up, only to see that they're heading straight for the floating island. And once again we cut, this time to Knuckles, who sees the approaching station and immediately takes off towards it in hopes of stopping it, only to get a laser to the face and get cast back down to the Chaotix, who introduce themselves again for the benefit of the audience. Robotnik releases two large burrow bots onto the island, with Robotnik ordering them to find and retrieve the Chaos Emerald hidden on the island. Of course, Knuckles and his friends aren't about to let that happen and launch a charge against them, in a panel that seems so artistically out of place compared to the rest of the comic that I'm convinced this single panel was done by a totally different artist. And then we get a two-page spread of the Chaotix destroying the two bots without a single problem, aside from the fact that Charmy kind of looks like he might be a reanimated corpse here. And once again cut, this time back to the Death Egg where Sonic has been fighting his way through the halls, taking out every bot he comes across, and then he comes to the cockpit where he and Tails, unaware of each other as they watch an equally unaware Robotnik as he gets more and more worked up at what's happening. In retaliation for Knuckles destroying his robots, he drives the Death Egg straight down, slamming it into the top of a mountain and slowly forcing the island down towards the ocean, intending on sinking it. The island tilts enough that the Chaotix start to slide off of its edge, and Knuckles once again takes off to attack the Death Egg, only to see that it's already pushed the island so far down that the bottom of it is dipping into the water and won't be much longer before it's totally underneath the water, everyone and everything on it drowned. And that's when we get our to be continued. So this story is once again just okay. 
It moves super fast, jumping from scene to scene with little flow, showing that it's sort of stretching itself thin. The only characters that didn't get any sort of screen time were Bunny and Antoine, and while I do enjoy the fact that Sally was given some screen time, the full emotional weight of the scene was sort of lost when all the emotion was just encapsulated in a single panel. And then there's the fact that Sonic just straight up kills someone who was roboticized, or at least gets them killed. I can't remember a time when that's happened before, and it is pretty damn frightening to think about. Still, there are some good points. Tails shows off some pretty good ingenuity with his disguise, even if I question how he's able to move in a body that's so much bigger than him, and Robotnik getting so incredibly worked up is actually pretty chilling, especially when he tries to physically drown an entire island by smashing his weapon into it. Overall, a mixed bag, I think. You know what's also mixed? The artwork in this issue. It's once again Manny Galan handling the pencils with Jim Amash and Jay Oliveris as the inkers for this issue, and it once again flits between pretty good to insert what's wrong with your face meme here. Snively seems to get the worst of it, but the robots and the detailed backgrounds and set pieces are once again spared from warping anatomy. But then there's also the issue of characters going from lots of detail to just none at all later in the comic. And then there's this particular panel that just looks like it was submitted by a fan artist, for how different it feels compared to everything else in the comic. It's incredibly weird. I got nothing else to say about this one, so I guess it's time for us to put the cap on this mini-series as we head into Sonic Quest Issue 3, and see if it actually does anything with that quest title at all. See you all next time, everyone.